Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game. We appreciate you being here once again. Another week, another show. We're not playing no games. Thank you for being a supporter of Million Dollars Worth of Game. If you're not already following, subscribe, subscribe. Follow us on social media. Hit the link down below. Buy some merch. But we thank you for being here. But like, share, subscribe. Listen, man. Million Dollars Worth of Game. We here. Continue to support us, man. We sh- Listen, I appreciate all our supporters. All Y'all not supporters. Y'all family. Thank you for being here. Another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game. Like, share. Subscribe, buy some merch, and it's just like that. Right. Listen, it's going down. We in Houston, Texas. Slip yes. thug. How I'm living. Million dollars worth of game. This shit is serious. Yes. This is the car edition. Car edition. I mean, you see what's going on? Big, big, big thug. Listen, man. We in the H, this baby. What's going on? This shit is, you never seen it before, million dollars worth of game. Look at the motherfucking whips. <laughs> Let's look at the whips. Let's start off with this. What is this right here? Man, that's the TRX, man. That's the slider, bro. That's the everyday, you know, with these potholes in Houston. You need something fast that's going to be able to go over anything, you know what I'm Okay, saying? now, what's this? This is this, this the Bronco, man. I had to do the Tudo Bronco. Oh, this, this is dedication to OJ or just? Nah, really, I was looking at the 60s Bronco and I wanted one, but they was like 200 and something, and this was brand new. It looked just like I said, man, let me get one of these and I can really enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? God, Jake, hold on, hold on, man. So, yeah. You got the big tires on there. See, I ain't do nothing but put big tires and it looked totally different. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what beats it up, though, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah man, I love it, though. That's, that's my this, favorite car right now. Just that big. Just the big Escalade on 30s. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I believe on in the 30s. Boy, Jesus. <laughs> on the 30s. That's the ESP on 30s. You, 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 can, you, can, you can run damn near bigger than you. Look. Squeeze <laughs> down, man. Hold up, man. I can hold up in that room, man. Look at him. He's a room now. This nigga's a room. He ain't right to the room. Yeah. Keep that thing. <laughs> this nigga's going up in the room. This nigga's going up in the room. Yeah, it's you got the Lambo, Lambo, Lambo truck right here. I always wanted the Lambo. I really want that Lambo Aventador, but I can't really fit in there comfortably. You know what I'm saying? So I had to do the truck. You know, I got the Maybach truck like my boy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, family together, like, baby. Uh, uh, you the family together, baby. Man. The Maybach truck. Yeah, Maybach truck. Black man. on black. I see you like that black. Black on black is out. That's that's your, that's what I'm gonna do every every time. You know what I'm saying? I got the Ghost. You know the brand new Ghost. Yeah, man. Brand blue, new Ghost. Blue interior. It got the light up grill on it. You know what I'm saying? Let me saying? see that shit. That's the that's the difference from the uh, the new ones and everything and the old ones. Come look at that blue interior too. I can't knock a phantom, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying, though, if a nigga pull up and that grill not lit up. Yeah, can't do that. Uh, but that, you know, they don't do it on the uh, trucks yet. You know, I had a truck before. I was going to get another truck, but I wanted to do the light up grill, man. Light up grill. Let's go to these bikes real quick. Okay. Oh, yeah. We saw these hogs. That's on what? That's what, 30s or 32, bro? I had a scooter that was similar. Yeah. I had a little scooter. That's when I started to get in the bike game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oscar, I was on 30s. That motherfucker mean. What about that? This the trike, man. This, this motherfucker this here. Right here. This is a motherfucker, man. See, you like, going to make me get one of these, man. That's some different Because I ain't going to fall because I got them two hooks up. Look how big the wheel is. It's 34 inch wheel. God damn. 4G out of And you got a system on it. I'm going to pull it out. Pull that motherfucker out. Pull that motherfucker out. Let's see a little bit better. Turn that motherfucker up. Is that key up in this one, second, bro?
Right here. Now, what's this right here, Slim? This is right here, Granddaddy, man. This is the 56 Cadillac L Dog, man. You ain't gonna see too many of these, man. I got a picture of BB King in this one. Damn. I got this one way from, uh, where they make the wine at in Cali? Naples? Naples. Yeah, Naples. I got that way from there. This is a, cool this is a 57 Bel Air. I got the LS in it, you know what I'm saying? That's just like a regular slide, and ain't that crazy. This is the, this the one, though. This is my 59 Cadillac. I got it done on the TV show called Texas Metal, you know what I'm saying? So this is like something real serious. You can go look at the interior, everything. They got everything. All of them got new motors and shit, you know what I'm saying? We threw no LSs in them, you know what I'm saying? This is my 64 Lincoln. I got, I tried to do something from every era, you know what I'm saying? One from every every decade. Yeah. You know, I tried to get like a 50, 60, but some of them I just had to get more, because I just, this the uh, suicide dope, you know, drop photo. What 64 Lincoln, this? this is 64 Lincoln. Yeah, Continental. Yeah, Damn. both doors open, you know what I'm saying? This motherfucker cold. This the 74 Caprice. They got the LS in it too, man. That's what I like to do. I like to put the new motors in my Big ass screen in this yeah. motherfucker too. Yeah, you got the uh, uh, iPad on the dash, you know what I'm saying? iPad speaker, this shit loud as Yeah, well, all that shit custom. Then we got the 75 Cadillac El Dorado. This is the Texas slab, you know what I'm saying? That's what we be talking about when we coming down slab. You know what I'm saying? With the swanger Who was the first motherfucker from Texas to pull a slab out, man? Oh, man, I don't know. That's, that's like in the 80s. That's so far back. It's a real OGs who've been doing this for a long time, man. Like, the Rams actually came out in 83. This is a remake of the Rams. But the actual real Rams came out in like 83. So it's really like a whole lot of Old so, so ain't nobody responsible for it. I'm sure it is. It's, I'm sure it's gonna be a couple people probably say they the first. You know what I'm saying? But on history, it's probably so. You don't know who it is, bro. Who the who the who first? The first dude one on to slab. break the slabs out on, on something. I don't know. Said it on something out here. Like I think it's a dude from the uh uh South Side. I forgot his name, but yeah, it's, it's somebody. It's this somebody. had to be one of the first bands that you this, this the 600 bands. Really, this was something I just as a youngster, this is all about they had the V12 600 bands. I just had to have one when I got older. Got the phones up. Same thing with the Impala. The telephones up. Yeah, phone and up. Oh, the phone? Yeah, they got the little phones and up. The Impala uh, Nine six and probably, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people love that uh this uh, phone. old school bands. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. This was like that it. shit, man. Yeah. Back in the day it was it was the one. Man, this was a this was a, a this was a black man's dream right, right there. Right. They had that motherfucking bands with that V12 on the side, right. man. This yeah, was man. a, a black man's dreams. I got an 87 Monte Carlo. I'm getting the LS swap on it right now, so that's why I didn't. Why you do the LS? They the best? Man, look, you know, I be outside with, you know, just jury. You don't want to be on the side of the road, bro. Like, you know, these cars, bro, like old school's gonna break down, they're gonna give you problems. The thing is, look how many cars. It is. I can't drive them enough to keep the batteries yeah. going, and so you, you know what I'm saying. You, you gonna gonna always have to be shit. doing something. Yeah. So when you put that LS in there, it's a brand new car. That's a brand new car. These cars probably the Mac ain't got ten thousand miles on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it start right up. Boom. Boom. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do the LS for. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I like the old motors too, like the old school the uh, '56. I ain't gonna touch it. You know, yeah. The motor, but yeah, on uh, most of my old schools, I like to, like I say, just put the I'm gonna black it all out, and then I'm gonna uh, put the LS. You know, you know the what I do? Forging, and I'm gonna do the forging. That's what I, that's the tradition to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, forging, I don't make the best rim. I don't know. I mean, I, my personal opinion, you know, they look like they look like the. Uh, you know, the designer wheel, you know, to me. I've seen a lot of the wheels and, you know, 
4G to me have the best selection, you know, so I, I got a good relationship with it. Absolutely. Now yeah. this, this is oh, the 1996. Hot mm. boy. Hot knew that was a 9-6, nigga. Yeah, listen, mm. all eyes on me. Blacked it out, though, you know what I'm saying? Gave it that. Yeah, I love it, man. How much, how much, how much in cars? Right here. Man, it's got to be a million dollars worth of cars. A million dollars worth of cars, a million dollars worth of game. Nah, man, that, 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 that's a way more than a million dollars. That's, that's that right there. That's that, that, that one. That's three. About 300, right? That's three right there. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's three right there over a million dollars, man. Right? right, exactly. God damn. Yeah. I just, I don't really do a lot else. Like, I don't play video games. My hobby is cars. Like, I yeah. do this every day. In the daytime, I'm working on cars. You know what I'm saying? Or, or riding and, you know, trying to fix them up or whatever. That's what I do. Leader, you ain't never thought about selling none of them. Man, on the cool, like, as I get older and trying to keep up with all this, I be wondering, man, do I want to keep up with all these? It's really anchors. This million dollars worth of game, you got to keep it real with the people, bro. Like, everybody want all this shit, but it's anchors. You know what I'm saying? I could be going to LA, I can go kick it with y'all, but when you got so much shit, you got to get back home to it. You know what I'm saying? So on the cool, it's a good idea in the beginning, but to keep up with all this shit, it's an anchor. It's going to keep you at home working on some shit or watching it or whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? How much jury you got on? Just got to be over a million worth of jury too. Shit. shit. <laughs> God, <thank you. laughs> My little homies got on me about this, bro. See me? I did a podcast not too long ago and I ain't have on them but like a little check. They like, Man, what is you doing, bro? Like, they get mad at me because I don't wear all this shit all the time. You know, I be feeling like, you know, it is what it is. I wear it when it's time. I do a show or some shit. But, right. Yeah, they be like, man, you need to put on this chair. You tripping, kid. <laughs> oh, shit, you be doing that shit. Because they be like, man, you be tripping. Y'all, you in Houston, bro. Yeah. Niggas don't know who you is, bro. Like, they be like, man, people don't even know what you do or who you is, bro, because you just be so cool with it. But in Houston, everybody know what's yeah. up. So everybody cool. know. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, man. I don't travel enough. Oh, you know, beautiful. you know, they love us in Texas. On, so man, we in Texas. Let me get my motherfucking sound right, man. I mean, we always turn my shit all up, up in like Texas. that. Ready to go down, man. Listen, man. What they if tuned into? You know what's into, going man. on? You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game, man. We got Slim Thug. Mm. Hey. Listen, man, it's going down. Mm. We in Texas, man. Houston, mm. H Town, mm. that is to be exact. Mm. Listen, man, it's been a long time coming. Showed uh, you them whips. Uh, uh, he been in the game for over 20 years. Uh, he got um, about 20-something cars, cribs, <laughs> businesses. Um, the money don't yeah. stop. He got a million dollars worth of jewelry on and a million dollars worth of game just for general purposes. And the day, today is a Monday, bro. This is mm. just on a Monday. This is Monday shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He disrespected the podcast by having that jersey on, but that's another story, Philly. That's what I did for y'all, man. The the Philly fans, you know what I mean? We was at the World Series, and man, we had, we was up. We was like, we got these motherfuckers. Came back to Houston. And they bullied him. It was it got crazy. Yeah, it got yeah. real disrespectful, man. Go Strolls, man. Go Strolls, man. Got, but, but one thing about us, man, we not no fucking haters. Right. So That's we real, salute man. y'all. Appreciate y'all be in fan square. Y'all yeah. ain't robbers. Y'all Appreciate ain't, you know. So yeah, shout out man. to the uh, the Houston Astros. <laughs> Appreciate Congratulations, that, man. That's we be love. back next year, though. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, Let's I mean, get it. I, would, well, I just didn't like the nigga Mattress Mac. Ah, he walking out with all that goddamn paper. He got to hit the bank roll out for y'all, boy. He Mattress hit. Mac got damn cleaned yeah. up. He hit the playing. lotto, man. What? But I'm, I'm going to say this. But he lost that on that Dallas shit. Because <laughs> he did. Fucking with Dallas. He went down. Yo, he I'm going to say this. 20 years in the game. Yeah. How did this shit start? When did it begin? Because you're still here. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Omega Account Solutions. Mm-hmm. Attention small business within, I'm talking about five to 5,000 employees. All you small businesses, you are responsible business owners who have continued to pay taxes and employ staff during the pandemic. Omega Account Solutions is a small business champion. I'm talking mm-hmm. about they're the champion. They come Helping to save you your day. and your business get back the money you deserve through the CARE Act. How much co- How much they give back? They get up to 26,000 per employee. So if you have employee. five employees, up to 5,000 employees, when you sign up for this. 26,000 per. You get 26,000 per employee. Recover the payroll taxes you overpaid as a refund, a refund up to $26,000 per mm. employee, even if you got the PPP loan. Learn if you are a good candidate in less than 10 minutes mm. with a free consultation. Omega was recently named the number one best 
ERC company for getting your ERC funds by, by Merchant Maverick, a small business comparison and review site. There's still time to find out if you qualify and file your claim. Again, up to twenty six. Thousand so let me just break this down for you. Employee. If you got a small business, mm-hmm. you got employees, you might be owed some money. So all you got to do is ten take minutes. 10 minutes out your time, fill us out. If you got 10 employees, you might get 10 times 26,000. If you got five employees, yes. five times. If you got 150 employees, 150 <clears throat> times 26 it depends it but depends. i'm gonna say this you gotta before we find out any of this you gotta take 10 minutes to, to see if you qualify and what i need you to do now is call 855-505-DAVE 855-505-DAVE or, or visit omegataxcredits.com slash barstool sports right now right now stop playing games yes this episode of me and i was worth a game is brought to you by new amsterdam vodka new amsterdam. i got a little something new today new amsterdam vodka is born from uncompromising passion for great vodka this heartfelt commitment to excellence has enabled them to produce america's vodka from a superb taste and an unparalleled smoothness their liquid is rated 93 Five times distilled and three times filtered. So they really put this through a process so that this vodka can taste extremely well. Wow. When it taps your tongue. I just want to tell you that New Amsterdam vodka is mostly inspired by those who stay true to themselves. True. Like me and Wallow. Yes, know? sir. Nothing is more true to themselves like me and Oliver for game, huh? Mm-hmm. Always true. Right, because we don't care about what anybody thinks. But back to New Amsterdam Vodka for pursuing your dreams and celebrating with friends and having an epic night out. This is why New Amsterdam Vodka is what? The official vodka of Barstool Sports. Sports. A hardworking spirit flows through everyone. Everything New Amsterdam Vodka does, from the water they use to the grains they select. Everything. Everything. Every step to distilling the process. Find your wins with New Amsterdam Vodka. When you're out about at your local liquor store, make sure you get you some. Right. Oh, man. It started before. Well, the the money started when I was in high school. I was 17. I started rapping when I was around 12, you know, young. But uh, around 17 is when I teamed up with Swisher House. And, uh, you know, we started doing the underground mixtapes. You had DJ Screw on the south side. Rest in peace, DJ Screw. R.I.P. DJ Screw, the GOAT, the originator of the Chopped and Screw movement, right? So they didn't mess with the north side like that, you know, like, so we had to kind of create our own lane, you know, in that world. So we did the Swisher house on the north side, you know, and it was kind of like a, you know, uh, Crips and Bloods kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. they did the red, we did the blue, you know what I'm saying? Like it, when we ride candy on cars and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was braided up, they had the fades, it was, you know, all that type of hood stuff, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, it was just a different environment, and we created some over there underground that was prosperous. You know, as as a high school student, you know, I never had a job before in my life. I just started doing this underground music, and I never stopped. I'm still doing it to this day. You independent? Always. Who taught you to hustle? Who taught me? I, I taught I me. Mean, I feel like the hustle was just instilled. I just had the hustle, you know. No, but what I'm saying is, the hustle of you know putting the work in, the rap, the who gave you the hustle of no? We gotta stack this. How to rap hustle? We gotta we gotta stack this. We gotta do this with the money. We gotta put the money here. We gotta. Or did you just learn it by? I think it was just seeing like uh, like my older brothers was in the streets a lot, and they would be in and out of jail and stuff like that. So oh, for that me to see over there? something right, uh-huh. <laughs> so me to see something I can do legally, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's all I had to see. Once I seen that I can make money off of it, I seen a return. I began to take it serious immediately. I was young, trying to put you know cars together. I was 15 before I was Slim Thug working on my old school L Dog Boss Hog. That's how I got the name. Like driving the L Dog. I'm just dri- really honestly. I was trying to be the Mac. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. I was looking. Uh, trying to be Goldie but as I cruise down the street you know OGs would be like what up Boss Hog you know so it kind of turned into Boss Hog you know what I'm saying but you know I already had things I wanted as you know so soon as the money started coming in on the rap side I took it very serious and began to you know hustle you know like none like none ever that was just straight off the top now now, when did it turn into like you was over there with Swisher you fucking with them 
When did yeah. you start doing your own thing? I started with Swisher House in 1998. And uh, it immediately, you know, uh, took fire. Like, it was like, it had a big movement behind it. You know, everybody was, was you to No, I didn't sign to him. It wasn't, we weren't doing albums. This was mixtapes. This is freestyle. The Steel Tipping song come from a freestyle I did on a Swisher House mixtape mm -hmm. when I was 18. It's the same words. Like, look, look who creeping, look who crowding, all that. Steel Tipping on Fofo, all that is from my freestyle. And um, it, like I say, they would just be on fire. I would do shows out for these freestyles from Texas to Louisiana. I would be doing shows. So I was getting money out for the shows, getting money selling the CDs and tapes. I had my own store. Uh, eventually, I felt like we was being held back. Like I couldn't, you know, like I don't like rules. I don't like people telling me what to do. I don't like waiting on people. And uh, I'm hella confident in myself. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I need nobody, you know. So me and my brother got together. We started Boss Hog Outlaws. And um, after that, man, the sky was the limit, bro. It's like, because now not only do we have our stores that was, you know, designated to us, we have everybody's stores. You know what I'm saying? So now we can sell our stuff to everybody. So now the money went up in a, in a major way. So, you know, after seeing that, it's just like, you know, how could you stop? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But but you must have been selling units. You said you was doing shows over freestyles right. from Texas to Louisiana. Texas to Louisiana. Since, since, since I was doing? 17, I missed prom doing the show. Like, you know, it was like that. It, it was since I was in high school and it was understood. The teachers knew I would sell so many CDs and tapes during school, like all that, man. So, you know, um and immediately I got to see my self value. You know, and that's what a lot of rappers don't see. Uh, and that's why they signed on record label deals early and, and for anything, you know what I'm saying? Because they think that's just the normal process. Because it is the normal process. But if you knew how much you was worth, you know what I'm saying, then it, it would, you would be more hesitant, you know what I'm saying, to give up all that, you know, for the, for the money they be offering. All right, so what happened when you're, uh, you know, Still Tipping come out? How did it go? How did your shit change up after that? Uh, yeah, Still Tipping came out. That's the first song that took. Uh, like, Houston music has always been legendary in the South. Like, from Houston to, you know, all over Texas, for sure, and Louisiana. Like, probably going to almost to Baton Rouge. All of that was gonna be on Houston music. They gonna listen to Houston music. You gonna do shows. You gonna they gonna get give you support. But um, when Steel Tipping came, it it crossed boundaries. The 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 chopped and screw movement went all around the board. People finally got it. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. They finally understood it all a little bit more enough to you know make them vibe to it. You know what I'm saying? So that just woke the world up, man. And everything we did just went. You know, times 10, times 20, and just kept going up and up. It went to MTV Awards, BET Awards. Like, mm -hmm. we was just doing everything, man. And, and it led to so much other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Tell me if I'm wrong, I, I, because I don't know, you know what I mean? I yeah. think, though, that was the first time, or maybe not the first time, but a, 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 a one of the times where Houston culture really was put on front street that's exactly you know what, what it saying? was that's what it yeah. was it was the description of houston culture you know put on front street all across the board like you know it had never been present presented to the world like that before so they started to see the rams they started to you know right. understand what chapter what chapter screw was and all that so you know it really like yeah it turned the city up yeah, because I ain't had cable TV growing up, so <laughs> I, I, I ain't, I didn't can't, you know, I don't uncut. know, who, I don't know yeah. who was first it and was all that, but first. I know by the time, you know, I was, of it, I'm rapping now when I see, and that was the first time I Kill saw Houston, like, damn, right. they, they had the, the brims poking exactly. out, they had, I'm like, oh, exactly. okay, so it was like, you could appreciate it as like that's some Houston shit. That's exactly. some real Houston shit. You know how shit LA right look. You know, you know what I'm hydraulics, right. six four and power. Right. It was our first description of you know, uh, you know that people could really see of what it looked like in Houston. You know, and it was saying? a different look for me. Yeah. Growing up for me, listening to the Ghetto Boys, Big Mike, and all of them, right. it was a different, totally right. different new look. It looks see, different. See, they real rappers to us. Like yeah. you know, like that was real big rapper. Like we put them up there with everybody else. You know, like yeah. yeah. 
uh, Scarface is Jay Z to, to us. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? absolutely. So it's like we didn't look at them as our peers. We looked at them like the, they you know, legends. They got deals and everything. They yeah. for real legends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Same with UGK. You know, we looked at them as you know. Yeah. Uh, for real rappers, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But we was underground, you know, the the DJ Screw movement, yeah. SUC movement was underground. Mm -hmm. It was more culture bound, right. you know what I'm saying? Talking right. about the candy cars and the right. swangers right. and right. sipping syrup. And, right. You know, they weren't really talking about that. No, they was know. talking about, they was, re they was really talking some universal shit. Real shit. shit. They yeah, was talking about the, yeah, yeah, some for real. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, really yeah, they, yeah. they was really talking some, whereas though, y'all y'all was talking some Houston shit, right? That just I took believe. over the world. You feel what I'm saying? They, they I sit alone in my four corner room. Right. That, that shit could play yeah. anywhere. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. well, niggas came on and y'all was talking some Houston shit, but it took the world by storm because number one, y'all niggas looked like y'all was together. Right. Number two, yeah, it was a movement. Y'all niggas looked like y'all was really doing it. Right. You know, motherfuckers believe when they like, uh, wait, this nigga, he got, yeah, of course. he got his name tagged in his shit. Like, yeah. Like that, yeah. That's really his shit. Right. Exactly. Like, this ain't no fucking rentals right here. That you always know? helped. But uh, I would say like when the DJ screw movement, I want to make sure I get them credit, you know, because I feel like they highlighted the culture of the city, you know, and, and started right. to, you know, um, talk about the rims and the candy paint, right. pop trunk, you know, all that, the culture of the city. So, you know, they definitely was the ones who started the culture rap. DJ right. Screw get all the credit for that. Look, Kiki the Dunn, Fat Pat, you mm -hmm. know, Pokey Island was definitely the pioneers of that. Yeah. You know, so when we did it, you know, we just it just went bigger. It, yeah, it went absolutely. to another level. And that's good to know who yeah. was the first to do yeah, it. Yeah, you, you know, know what, what I'm mean? saying? So but but still tipping was years later. Like they had they they years of putting up starting the screw was like early nineties. Still tipping came early two thousands. So yeah. it was like about 10 years in. Yeah. And and Swisher Highs had been in the game since 98, and we've been making a lot of moves on that. I think I had the deal. Didn't I have a deal before Steel Tipping even popped? I think I had to deal with Pharrell before the Steel Tipping even popped. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we did that, and then the Steel Tipping popped. It really just went to the next level, man. It took us to all to the next level. We look like a movement, me, Mike, and Paul. But, By you but, being. But I just want to say something. That's like, that's. That's the realities in life. You know what I'm right. saying? Big Daddy Kane and and all of those rappers. The, the, the hip, the hot, was the, what's their name? Uh, you know. Sugar, sugar. Sugar, yeah, all them dudes walked. So now the rappers could run. Right. You know what I mean? So shout out to all the rappers from from, from Houston, the exactly. little Kiki, mm -hmm. the, you know, DJ Screw, everybody that walked so yeah. that you, Mike but, Jones, but, and Paul Wall, the and Dunn, Swisher you House. You know, they still active. Though. Everybody, everybody who you name, everybody is still active. Like, huh? Kiki still dropping still music. Doing that, absolutely. Still Kiki doing shows, got slabs, selling merch. Too. Kiki got cars, like, you know, Big Pokey, j Dog just dropped something. Like, everybody is still active out here right. and dropping music independent. It's just like, we ain't on a worldwide scale promoting it. We ain't on no major label, so right. we ain't doing press runs, you know, out of right. town. We just, you know, satisfying our direct cu uh, customers. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if you tapped in through Instagram, you can see, but for the most part, we ain't really just hitting the road like, hey, let's, you know, put up some posters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We just catering to the fan base. We, I'm 42 now. You know, I ain't really... It's like I'm retired, bro. I'm just having fun, doing whatever I want to do, you know? Dropping when I want to drop, you know, and just having fun with the music. Like, it, it, I, think it's, I think it's real wild, the fact that after all these years, you was ever maintain an audience of people in the fan base because... Since you came out to now, there have been like 200,000 rappers that came and went. Right. Some of them had biggest, bigger success than you. There, yeah, I've seen a lot about, of that. About, about them 200,000, it's about like five, 600 that had bigger success than you ever had, and they gone. Exactly. It's a lot of that. I see that so much, man. Like, and then especially like living, they not living like me, you know, and that ain't no shame. It's just like to... You know, my thing is this. I'm independent, so my thing is to advocate being an independent artist. You know what I'm saying? If a dude go get a record label deal and that's what he do and it work out for him and that's what he wanted to do, I'm not hating on that. I'm happy for that dude, you know, but I'm as an independent artist, 
I feel like I should advocate being independent and tell what's good about it. Like, that's exactly what you said, bro. Like, I seen so many dudes be up, and you know, when when they hot and they putting that money on you and you doing shows, yeah, you up. But when you don't own nothing, uh, five years later, you're not eating off of that, bro. And look at TikTok. Look at this new stuff coming on you. The, the, it's a different way of listening to music today Okay, you used to have to go to the store And buy your favorite artist CD You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. Now, everybody got access to everything Bro, like people is going to find old songs And falling in love with them And turning them up You never know what's going to happen And at the same time, streaming is only like at What, 8%? It ain't nowhere near where it's really going to be You know what I'm saying So the catalog is priceless Like, right. you never know how much right. that's going to go up mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying Right. So if you depending on being hot And when you doing your shows And all that there You good But when that die down And they putting their money Behind the next dude What that's gonna leave you And in the long run If you ain't really owning nothing You, you ain't getting no checks I'm getting a check every month Out catalog You know what I'm saying And I ain't really gotta do nothing new You know It's gonna be still coming Even if I stop rapping right now But when I do do new stuff It's just you know Add more to it So mm -hmm. it's like you know, it's fun. It's like it's, that's how it's supposed to be, though. You're supposed to get the majority of your bread from an independent, you know, standpoint. That's how I look at it. You know, I feel like that should be everything, though. Right. I, I feel like I feel like a lot of black people complain. Like on on Instagram, I get in trouble all the time. I'm blocked on live right now. Actually, it's because I say the wildest shit. But I just stand on, you know, with the culture, you know, we should all get the most of whatever we do, you know what I'm saying? Whatever we majority of, whatever we make cool, we should get the most of that. We don't mind working with people and them getting paid, but the major label should be a partnership. It shouldn't be an ownership, you know what I'm saying? Right. And that's how a lot of this stuff set up for us, and that's why we, in the long run, be broke again, you know what I'm saying? But it shouldn't be the case. You know what I'm saying? If you own your catalog, you'll, that won't be the case. You'll still be getting paid. You know well, what I'm saying? If you own a portion of your catalog. If you own a good portion of it as a partner. Like I say, I ain't saying don't work with nobody like because everybody need money. But I'm saying when people know that and they giving you, you know, when it, you know what it is like. And then it's, it's like this here. People who ain't got money think money is everything. So... When you get a little money, they yeah. say, well, you got money, you got this, you got a million dollars, but what if you made them a hundred million dollars and they only gave you two? You still get minimum wage, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, So you got to know your self-value and what you really supposed to get. Uh, whenever you get paid something, working with somebody, figure out what they got paid, you know what I'm saying? And then that'll make you look at stuff different. Nobody ever will think about how much they got, you know what I'm saying? Now, now. now hold on, but let me say this. And... A lot of times you see artists, right? They come out, they pop off, they do their shows, they running around. They, you know, they was young though when they came in the game. So yes. they get some money. And when your shit pop off, a lot of times the artists don't be worrying about the back end money, nah. the residuals, they want the, the how much money they. No, because. I just made a hundred thousand at that show last night, and then I'm making a hundred thousand tonight, and then a hundred thousand on Sunday, and then I'm doing this a a week for the next having to my songs burn out. Right. But then when six, seven, eight, nine years go by, and that money slow up, but you still got that forty, fifty thousand dollar bills, sixty thousand all exactly. that a month, <laughs> then and work. you know a little more. Now you want to start doing investigations. Hold and be on, mad. Man, what the fuck's going on? Hold on, man. <laughs> yeah. Because, right. Exactly. So, how much did I make the company? Exactly. Oh, no, nigga, don't even worry about that, buddy. You fuck you asking questions. Well, no, I'm just trying to figure out how much I made the company. Hey, I tell you shit. You know what I mean? No, you can get the label audited. Exactly. Then you get the label audited and then the truth come out. Oh, yeah, you you made them a, a $117 million. And you sitting there like, Man, I got nine hundred forty-two thousand in my yeah. account, man. <laughs> Fuck you, mean I made him one hundred seventeen million, man. Now you mad? Now that's when they they cut they go right at their labels. That's it. But that's too if, late. If you would have went into the game, a lot of times because artists today understand this. Y'all got y'all hold more fucking weight than y'all would ever imagine. Ever. You know why? Because 
Labels don't sign niggas that ain't already moving. See, back in the day, you right. could just walk up on the nigga and rap. You hot. Get him in the studio. Put some shit around him. <laughs> no, they like, you can't do that shit no more. You got to already have some movement. Yeah, you already got to have some. So when you getting in front of their face, you already got movement. You You're not behind the eight ball. So you could be like, oh, no, nah, man, that's some bullshit, man. Y'all niggas tripping, man. Yeah. And guess what they got? More money. Exactly. They just was testing you. If, if you if you going to take a bag of fucking coins, then that's what we going to give you. Most but hold on, wait. We got, we got the bag of hundreds. We, 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 did, we, we thought you was going to take the coins. But yeah. we, we got the hundreds back here. Hold on, don't go nowhere. You just got to understand what you worth. And, exactly. and negotiate what you worth. That's it. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of people don't even uh, understand contracts, so they take advantage of that, bro. Like, you know, we coming from the hood. You ain't never seen $100,000 in your life, and they offering you that for a rap. You want to be a star. Like, they taking advantage of the situation, bro. But at the end of the day, with how the world set up now with social media, like you say, you got to have movement anyway to get, you know, something right. to, if some if, if they could just stay down for a year or two and see how the money come in off of them being independent, then they can understand that, you know, because if you even sign a deal, what they going to say, man, what they I just held in Instagram, it take 200 and some thousand to make a song. You know what I'm saying? How you going to know how much money they spent on you and what they did or what they didn't do? It's a it's a scam to me, bro. Ain't no way you can. Ain't no way you'll ever know. Like you know what I'm saying. Only way to know is to really own your shit, bro. And that's it. Straight like that. But it's like, like I say, everybody think the system and 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 this is normal. Like I so I don't shame nobody. I get mad at no artist going get no record deal because that's just what we taught to do. You know, you want to be a star, you got to go get a record deal, and they gonna make you hot or whatever. But. You scamming folks, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Unless you really out there for who you really are, that extra money you paying to get this played, is that really your fans or is that them just making you look like you hot? You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I can be here 20 years because these really my fans, bro. I'm talking directly to them. I ain't putting nothing on the radio. I'm talking directly to my people, you know? Right. We got a real relationship. You know, this is real fans. I'm not paying nobody to run my numbers up on YouTube or nothing because what does that matter, you know? Know what I'm saying at the end of the day, I want to see who I really am. You know what I'm saying? If this shit went or not, you know, just I can learn from that. You know, but at the end of the day, it's all income. Whether it do a, a million or a hundred thousand, it's all income, bro. It's, it's all, all coming to you. It's coming straight to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Once you and I'm not out here trying to rap on Metro Booming Beast for two hundred thousand dollars or paying no astronomical fees. I'm rapping on my homeboy beast. You know, I'm keeping it Texas. I'm giving you culture. You know, still because I believe that's what I, people want to see. When I hear Snoop, I want to hear some West Coast shit. When you hear Slim Thug, you should want to hear some Houston. You know, shit. And that don't mean go jump on the hottest producer and pay him all this money. Now, I got to get past that to get my money right now. I'm going to fuck with the people around here, the youngsters who out here doing their thing, Young Sam, you know, uh, G&B, Mr. Lee. That's my number one uh, producer. So the same dude I started with, basically. And I'm going to give you that culture, you know, and that's a part of being independent, too. Like, don't go too crazy on your on your budget. You know, you got to, right. you independent, you want to be in, you want to build your house for the low and be able to, you know, profit off your shit. Don't be in the For red. the max. Exactly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, like, and that most. wasn't no shot to Metro Booming because I know how the internet is. <laughs> no, you know, I love Metro Booming. I would love to have a Metro Booming beat. Like, he's one of my favorite producers, but as an independent artist, it's just like, I know I can't afford that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, a Metro Booming say, Thug, I fuck with you. I give you every, yeah, I would. Come on, huh? Yeah. No, nah. because, you know, I, I just got to clean nah, it up I'm a big fan of Metro Booming. you know how the net take shit, tangle and twist it like an idiot's pretzel. And then next thing you know, they be talking about Slim Thug. This is nah, Metro Boomin. one of my favorite producers, and bro. Tells, and tells <laughs> rappers, don't do this. No. Some nah. more, lot, most of you I niggas said, need that Metro Boomin. Slim Thug can't afford yeah, it. I, mean, I can't afford yeah, a Metro Boomin. Most movement. of you niggas need it. To blow. So you better spend that fucking 200000 <laughs> right. so your fucking career can take off. He's yeah. already a fucking made man. I'm 42. I we can't for, afford that shit. I'm sticking he, to my sugar. He already a made man with, 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 with paid fans. And they, they fucking right. guess how old his fans is. Right. 42, 42 too. Exactly. Fucking job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah.
So exactly. dude, you niggas in 21, yeah. 20, 19, y'all might need Metro to get this nah, buffer. Okay. I, I love Metro Real Bubba Peace. He one of the, my favorite producers of the day. Absolutely. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Did you know that it can now take up to 11 weeks on average to hire for an open position? That's almost two and a half months. Yeah. So if you're hiring for a growing business, do you really have that kind of time to no. wait? Like, do you have that type of time? Nope. Well, if you're listening today, I got some advice for you. Stop waiting and start using Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter can help you find qualified candidates for all the roles fast. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Game. Game. You're talking about for free. Yeah. Right now, you could use it for free. And, you know, how is it? Zip Recruiter is so efficient mm. at helping to you hire. Zip Recruiter uses powerful matching technology to quickly find and send the most qualified people for your role. You can check out the people that Zip Recruiter send to you. And if you really like one or two, hire you can personally invite them to apply with one click, which may make them apply even sooner. Mm -hmm. Stop playing games. Get with Zip Recruiter. Plus, here's how quickly Zip Recruiter can help you hire four out of five. I'm talking about four out of five who post on Zip Recruiter. Get a qualified, I'm talking about somebody that's quality candidate within the first day. I'm talking about that Damn. first day. So great recruit, so zip recruiters don't play no games. They don't play no games. You so qualify, speed up. you look, huh, you're hired. Whip, whip. No Let's games. Get it. So speed up your hiring process with Zip Recruiter. See why 3.3 million businesses have come to Zip Recruiter for their hiring needs. Just, I'm talking about, just go to the exclusive website mm. to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash game. And again, ZipRecruiter.com slash game. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. This business spotlight is brought to you by Bar Barstu Sportsbook. Sportsbook. Y'all see me on there personally. Yes. I show y'all my wins. I sh sometimes I show you my losses when I lose. But, but you win all the time. Mostly. I do win all the time. But because there's so many different ways to do it. The parlay is just so many different ways. Right. So download today and create an account. $1,000 to new player bonus. If your first bet loses, you can get up to $1,000 in bonus cash. Must be 21 and over to gamble. If you have a gambling problem, 1-800-GAMBLER. Welcome to the that episode a million dollars worth of game yeah. business spotlight today listen man we have the one percent club uh -huh. listen man we talking about that family trust we listen mm. i don't think y'all understand what's going on we talking about the family trust this is for everybody you don't have to be starting a business you don't have to have a million dollars right now we're talking about the family trust every human being on this planet need to be listen send this to a friend send this to a relative i'm just send this to your people everybody on the planet need to establish a family trust today we got the one percent club That's and i'm talking about what what if you don't trust your family? <laughs> no, you ain't got to trust your family to get a family trust. No. Like, is it, it, no, that's deep. That's deep. Oh, you said, man, you can, you can just just, just, one. just, just, just thinking. You, know, you know. He said you only got to trust one person. Oh, okay. So yeah. you ain't got to trust your whole family, but it's still you got to get a family trust. <coughs> that's why the 1% Club is here today. And right before we even get started, we're going to give you a free ebook. Mm. My family is debt free. The free ebook. What I need you to do is I need you to text family to 832 621 08 Two oh eight three two six two one oh eight two oh. Yes, I'm talking about. Listen, the 1% club is not playing. Also, go to club1percent.com. Stop playing these brothers right here. Tyree, Coach DeMont, I'm at Tedrick. Listen, they're not playing no game straight out of Texas. They're not playing, they're giving out the game. We're talking about that family trust. Everybody sending this to somebody you need to trust. They're going to give you the game now. Coach DeMont, tell me what y'all got going on. Tell me what this 1% club is really about. So 1% Club is, we all came together, uh, Tedrick, Tyree, and myself, uh, we came together, we merged our companies together to give families the information that the elite families have. So like the Donald Trumps and the Kennedys and the, and the Rockefellers. So we give people that information. Now, this is what I need to know. Why is it important to, to get a trust, a family trust? It's important to get a family trust because you want to set your family up for success later on. When you leave here, you want to not have to pay taxes on non-taxable events when it comes to putting things inside the trust. You can put your LLC inside a trust. You can put yourself inside of a trust. You know, you could put your business inside a trust. You can put anything that you own, your jewelry. You can put your, your assets, your money. You can put anything inside a family trust. Now, mm -hmm. this is what I need to know, Tyree. Mm -hmm. What, like, like, you know, growing up, we when we heard of trust, we thought about all these big town Rockefeller. We thought about these big families. Right. Mm -hmm. What do I have to do or be doing to have a trust? Can I? This is the difference between the product we got. It's for any and everybody, right? So you don't have to be 
an elite already to protect what you do have. Right? So I could be working at a, I could be the regional manager for a Target? Yes. Yeah. Because you still got stuff that you can protect. And at, at the end of the day, the most popular conversation we hear about is what? Generational wealth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? But if you don't have structure, it's really no generational wealth. So any and everybody needs it because everybody needs structure. Oh, so I could get I could get a trust no matter what. Yeah. Can I throw him in the trust? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. would you think? Oh, yeah. I might want to just put you in there. Oh, you leave you leave me the money. <laughs> no, no, I'm putting you, you inside of that. I'll get you dusted off from the day. I want to put him in the trust. I want to put his name. I'll be crying, counting the shit out your mother. He don't understand I trademarked his name. I still got the own. So can I just put his yes. name in the trade? Yes, his can. trademark. Yes, yes. Oh damn! I'm gonna put your name in the trust. All right. I'm oh, doing yeah, that I'm immediately. Trademark. Yeah, I got the trademarks. I'm gonna throw his name if in the trust. All the people that have LLCs, you can put an LLC in the trust. You want to protect your 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 LLC, so because the LLC can be pierced. So right now, if if you have a business and that business is in the LLC and somebody somebody falls off a roof, you can get sued. Well, with a trust, you can't get sued because why? Because you own nothing but control everything. Now, let me ask you a question. I like how, that. How, how much do it cost? Because people sitting here listening, they be like, all right, if I'm going to put my LLC, I'm just Johnny Nobody. I'm just figuring it out. I got a little company. I got a, a landscaping company, and I want to put it. How much do it cost? So in order to join the 1% Club, you got to join the membership. The mm-hmm. membership costs $997, and it comes with a free trust. All right, so outside of the membership, how much do a trust cost? Normally, if you go through a lawyer, it costs fourteen, fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. Oh, so 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 everybody don't want to. Everybody don't want to just do a trust because everybody might not have the finances. You got to be in position in some type of way to do the trust. Right. But Every member of the one percent club gets a trust, and we teach you how to use it. We give you all the paperwork that you need to transfer your assets to it, and then uh, Tedra's gonna talk about how we use a trust to get people and help them to become debt free and to fix their credit. How you do that? So what we do is. We use the trust, right? We move the debt, transfer the debt over into the trust. We go through the court system and get it invalidated. When we do that, the debt leaves your credit and transfers over to the trust. So it's no longer on your credit anymore. The only difference between it is credit repair is a Band-Aid. You can still be sued. You can still have judgments on you. They can still come after you legally. Even if it's off your credit, you still be gone as your wages, all that type of stuff. With us, once it's moved over into the trust, then and it's invalidated. They can never. The debt is gone. It's gone from yeah, the, the system. Uh, it's gone from the bank. You don't owe the debt anymore. You can't be sued. Nothing. So all the all the people that's doing credit repair right now. You need to be a member of the one percent club because there's no other credit repair company out there doing this. Damn, so you could just take the credit, like, because he like a debt to me. So I could just throw him in that joint and I ain't got to worry about the shit no more. Yeah, go away. Because he's a fucking <laughs> headache, so I ain't going to get headaches no more. It could be <laughs> medical <laughs> bills, it could be cell phone bills, it could be anything. Yeah. Anything can go into trust. Literally. Damn. Your jury, your hat. You know, we have people that come to us dealing with all kinds of situations. You got people come to us be having child support issues, or they freezing their bank accounts, taking their money. And um, if you have a trust in a trust bank account, yeah, you own nothing but control everything. You're just a trustee of the trust. So child support can't even take the money out of the trust. Mm. The IRS can't touch the money inside of the trust. Mm. Mm. That nigga so Warren Buffett, yeah, yeah. Put Warren Buffett, in put Warren Buffett paid less taxes, um, less in taxes than he paid his secretary. So just say, for instance, he made $2.7 billion. He only paid $100,000 in taxes. Why? Because he only pays himself as a trustee from his trust. So with you, when you have a trust, you only pay yourself for taxable events. So whether you have a business or you are just an everyday worker, if you have a trust, you only pay taxes on taxable events. So that's what we teach inside the One Percent Club. Now inside this book, my family is debt free. Um, they first of all, you're getting a free book. What you need to do right now, and you need to get with the One Percent Club. The way you do that is you text family to eight three two six two one. 0820 832-621-0820. They're going to get the free ebook. I'm talking yes. about it's totally free. You're getting this ebook. My family is debt free. What is inside of this ebook? We give you the seven secrets to using a family trust to being debt free and to having a 750 credit score. Damn, 750. Okay. So y'all, y'all, y'all tighten the person right up. Tighten them right up. Yes, that's sir. Seven, that 750 is anything. Gil got like a 350. 
So I'll be working on this stuff right now. I seen my Gil pull out an Amex card early. He ain't got three fifty. The colorful one, nigga. The colorful one. Fuck, not the regular one, nigga. I got the one with the splashes all on it. You know what that means? I don't get a fucking Bugatti right now, nigga. Damn, my ain't gonna question it. Put me, put that on my card, nigga. I pay you niggas next month. Yes, sir. Nine million, nigga. <laughs> Fuck wrong with you. But, but what's Spray going on is that this is great that it's coming to the game. And like everybody's is out there. Like I need everybody to really focus and understand this. This is for everybody to trust. You got a lot of business owners out there. A lot of people mm -hmm. got trucking companies. They got restaurants. They got a lot of stuff. And a lot of people become liable because they out there in the front and somebody could come at them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, sue them or whatever. So it's like. So it's good. It helps to, you become it, bulletproof. Bulletproof. Yeah, okay. It's, it's uh, good to. Uh, what was that line y'all keep saying? I like that. I own nothing but control own everything. Own everything. Yeah, I, own Nelson I own shit, but I control Nelson everything. Nelson Rockefeller started that. He said, I own nothing, control everything. That's why we still know the Rockefeller name right now. It's because he set up what Tyree said, a structure. Mm -hmm. So if we want to start talking about, do we want to build generational wealth? Do we want to help the next seven generations of our family? That's 150 years. 150 years, nobody in this room is going to be sitting here. No. But our structure will still be in place because we own nothing, but we still control it. So you two, you'll still be controlling a million dollars worth of game from y'all grave. If it's in the structure, the structure of the trust, if it's in the structure of a trust, a trust is contract law. It's not based upon the Constitution. I mean, it's not based upon the uh, the uh, it's based upon the constitutional law. It's not based upon the, the law as we know it. Right. Yes. The statutory law. Yeah. So if it's written into the law, which is the contract which there's over 150 different types of trust. So if it's mm -hmm. written into the trust... And What's you say, the best trust? Yeah, you're an irrevocable trust, trust, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're doing real estate, a revocable trust will help you because you can change it. But what we, what we teach is an irrevocable trust. So that means that whatever you say, if you say, hey, my daughter, I want to give her $10,000 when she gets married. Hey, my son, I want to give him $20,000 when he graduates from college. Uh, the houses that we have in our family, we don't ever want them sold. This is like the show Power. You see how Ghost controlling his son from the grave? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because Ghost, even on that show. He's still making them go Ghost, to school. Ghost had, had a trust. That's the reason why Tariq got to go to school and graduate college. Before he could touch any of the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. one of the biggest differences of it, a trust over a will. Like, for example, if y'all, you know, you got $5 million to leave your family, right? But and you, you got to leave it to your son. Your son, eighteen years old, and you end up, you know, passing away. You give your son five mil at eighteen. Gonna blow it. What's the chances of him doing the right he thing? Gonna work like? that five mil out. Exactly. Yeah. You got to trust. You get to still allocate the money to him how you want, even when you're not here. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the control, and that's the structure that you need. Yeah. Now, now, if the, to be a member of the uh, club one percent, right? One percent club, but with club one percent dot com, you go on. What, what all the benefits of being a member of the crew, of the club? So, you get, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, pretty much you get access to all the other clubs we have. So once you become a member, it comes with a free trust. But it's like this. Basically, our community heard of trust, right? But nobody teach you how to implement it. Nobody teach you how to use it. Nobody teach you what to do with it. It's just a, a, a topic. It's a conversation. It's just fluff, really. But what we're doing is now you got the trust with the membership. Okay, what else can you do with the trust? So we got other clubs. If you want to learn how to transfer your assets, you want to learn how to put your LLC inside of that, you want to learn how to save on taxes, right? Or if you want to learn how to get funding for your trust. So your trust got its own bank account. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get funding, like I just saw, you had a, a business uh, Amex call. Yeah, so yeah. You had the same thing for your trust, right? So if you want to learn how to do those different type of things, we teach you how to do all that with your trust. So it's not just the 1% club, you get a trust, and you're just saying, oh, I got a trust. Mm -hmm. That ain't what we here for. Yeah, we're not right. just selling you a trust. Right. You're just walking around right. with a box. So that's that's one of the main yeah. things. Like the community that we are building, it's like it's game changing. They find we, out these niggas the party promoter is trust funds. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. once you get to the party, we, we open up the back hand. door for you. That's the freaky we, room back yeah. there. Yeah. 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 That's the liquor room back there. So once you get in, you get invited to all the parties. All the parties. Nipsey Hustle, God rest his soul. He gave us the mm -hmm. blueprint in one bar. He said, open trust accounts deposit racks. Million dollar life, life insurance, insurance on, on my flesh. flesh. Beamers, Benz, Bentley, or Lex. Ferraris or them Lambos. That's what's next. So he gave us the blueprint. He said, open your trust. Then get your life insurance, which is which that creates your family bank. Mm -hmm. That's how you get living benefits. 
Then you go get the cars. You go get the, the, the liabilities. That's Then you leave that all of that to your family and to your children. That's how you build true generational yeah. wealth. And that's why to this day, Nipsey Hussle's trust is still paying his children. Puma is paying it to Nipsey Hussle's trust. He still, Nip still, from his grave, Nipsey Hussle is still taking care of his family and still doing his endeavors. You can't do that with a will. You can't do that with just saying, hey, uh, I want to tell my sister what I want done when I die. That's not that's not true generational wealth. That's mm. real. Give him that number again, so man. So right now, I need y'all to get this free ebook, right? The 1% Club is giving out a free ebook. My family is debt free. Like nobody in my family have any debt because, I, you know, I got this. But what you need to do is get a free ebook. What you need to do is text family to 832 621 0820. 832 621 0820. Text family, and you're going to get the free My Family is Debt Free ebook. And also, I need you to go to club1percent.com. Now, before we get out of here, guys, what, what, what game y'all want to get to people, man? All right. So, one of the things I want to give people is um, when you look at rap artists, all right? Because I know you used to be in, in that mm-hmm. lane. Um, what they tend, what record labels would do is, this is how important insurance is, right? Mm. So what record labels would do is when they give you that advance, they'll put a life insurance policy on you mm. and make themselves the beneficiaries. So they, they protecting their asset. So why, why don't we protect ourselves and our families from when we leave here? I gotta get life insurance on this nigga. Yeah. I already got two on you. <laughs> Just in right? case he but, fall but down what, the steps. What makes, it more power, what makes it more powerful is you could put a life insurance, your life insurance policy inside of a trust and create a family bank. Mm. Like the Rockefeller. Like the Rockefeller. That's the and you could put money, so I can go deposit 500000 into my life insurance policy. So I don't have to benefit from my life insurance policy just when I die and let other people benefit from it. Benefit now. I can benefit nobody from it now. Can't nobody seize it, can't nobody touch it, can't nobody put a freeze against it, it's protected. Yeah, so what you could do is, you put, you, I could put $500,000 into my life insurance policy, go pull a 500000 back out, and I could still be getting 10 to 16 percent interest on that 500,000. Mm. So I could benefit from it now, not later on. So it's the, it's the real. Well, how y'all niggas get this information, man? Study it, man. <laughs> yeah. Study it. So what yeah. separates us from all the other, even when I was, I'm the GOAT of credit, by the way, you know, but what's the GOAT? The GOAT. Yeah, the GOAT. Of credit. The GOAT. Even the ones that call themselves the GOAT called me the GOAT. Mm. You mm. know? So. The reason why I was I, I've been so successful on the credit side before we even started the trust is because I studied the law of credit. If you go to court and you got a public defender, what's gonna happen? You're going to jail. You're going to jail, right? So you go hire these credit pack companies that are just sending out letters but don't understand the law of credit. Don't understand the loopholes. You're going to credit nothing. jail, nigga. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's gonna happen is your credit score going not, not gonna move. That's what reason why half of the credit repair companies not giving results. Because mm. they do all doing the same thing. Mm. Right. Mm. So you got to study the law of credit. So that's what we did before we started this trust. But the trust is a, is a whole lot better. And when you're getting your credit repaired, legally they can't tell you a time frame when they have it done. They're not supposed to collect money up front. But with this trust, it's different. We transferring the debt over and getting the debt off your credit. How long did that take? It take no more than 90 days. I can give a money back guarantee. Money back guarantee. Money back guarantee. So what y'all need to do right now, listen, man, this is the 1% Club, man, on Million Dollars Where We Gain Been in Spotlight, but we got a free ebook for y'all yes. right now. Y'all going to get it. My family is debt free. I need you to text family to 832-621-0820. Also go to club1percent.com. Check these brothers out. Mm-hmm. Tedrick, Coach DeMont. We listen, got, so, so they got, what's we, going we on? We got man? something we want to give y'all today, man. So we want to plant a seed into what you guys are doing mm-hmm. in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that 100 years from now, we'll still know your name. Mm. Uh, so we created the Million Dollars Worth of Game Family Trust. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Each Who named that shit up? Is it, is it my... Because I just, you just said he could set some shit up. Yeah, I can put you in trust. I'm putting you in there. My shit we ain't getting, in you niggas' names. Y'all, just... This is called a business trust, but we're it's also giving trust. each one of y'all individual trust. I just got a trust. check, nigga. So we're giving each one of y'all individual yeah. trust, and we'll help you set it up. Believe uh, that. Where each one of y'all can have your own family trust mm-hmm. so that in seven generations, people still know who you are. But this is your business trust. So this is how you're going to uh, create non-taxable events for million dollars worth of game. I know all the millions of dollars that y'all getting, all the land, yes. all the well, all the Lamborghinis, like all the Rolls Royces, all of don't that is going like to be in your business. It's going to be in your business trust. So we're going to show you how to do that to create non-taxable events. 
so that you are protected. My billionaire mentor well, told me, he said, my shit for him, man. My, my billionaire mentor, my, shit, my billionaire mentor <laughs> told me, he said, man, this ain't yours. he said, the more money you get, the more people go try to come and take what you have. So mm. the they more, taking shit. the more God elevates y'all, the more people go try to mm. come and take what y'all have. So we want to help y'all to be protected. I'm part of the 1%, nigga. Yeah, y'all yes, definitely sir. part of the Fuck 1%. Yes, sir. Own nothing, control anything, John D. In order to be in the 1%, you got to do what the other 99% won't do. Right. right. And let's join well, they 1%, won't do nigga. And they won't bust a move like we do. Look at that. <laughs> this is my shit. He ain't got nothing to do with this. No, I'm going to open some shit up in his name, but don't worry, but we going <laughs> to talk about that later. Mm -mm. And it's just like that. Right. You, you yeah. know what? When did you tap into? Because you said you did a, a deal. Fuck, you need a horse, man. No, that's cool. You said you did a deal with Star <laughs> Trek slash. No, get out of here. You said you did a deal Give with Star Trek. Star Trek slash Interscope. Yeah. Balls Hawk. When, when, after that, you got into the independent mind because that was a deal. Was that one regular deal or what was that? With the Interscope deal? Yeah, how was that? No, so that was a that was a label deal we did with uh, Interscope. Appreciate that. Scarf, with Interscope and um, Star Trek. Yeah, but after that, the whole label who we was with, they switched up my A&R, everything. So I was like, man, I got to get back to motion because they had me held up for a second. So I was like, man, you know, I talked to everybody over there. I had to end up giving them some off my second album, but I went back independent, though, you know, and, and ever since then, I stayed independent, man. Like, it's just a more fit for me because I would like to move when I want to move and how I want to move. You know, I, I would, the same thing with Pharrell. Like, I would love to have Pharrell tracks, but as an independent artist, and I know how much they really worked, I can't afford it, you know what I'm saying? So I just stick to, you know, my culture guys out here. You, you do that deal. What happened out of that? You come up out of that. Yeah. Then what you go right into? Because I know Boss you. Of I know you went into the game, and I know you learned a lot of shit in them buildings. Right. Exactly. I already had the promotion. For real, made me a star already. You so know he's what like, better cool. Now I'm going back down. Yeah. I could just use that as a, a tool to you know uh, keep pushing my independent stuff. Boss of our bosses is probably my biggest mm -hmm. album. You know, honestly, independent. The song Thug and I Run how probably records, got more. How many records too? I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? But it probably sold. Now nah, I would say I already platinum did sell more than that yeah the, I already platinum sold more but I'm saying the songs when I go do a show yeah. it's gonna be thug I run you know I rarely perform I ain't heard of that and stuff like that you know what I'm saying yeah. because the people who come to my shows is cultural people you know what I'm saying they want to hear that you know that Texas shit yeah. as of right now how many shows you do a year Ah shit! I don't know. I did two last weekend. Like uh, shit, I would say about four a month. You know what I'm saying? You still be getting like booked that. strong. You be getting yeah. booked. Yeah, booked all the time, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like well, I was just in San Antonio. Uh, what was that? Friday in Victoria, Texas. Texas is a, a whole country. Texas is, bro, man. Yeah. Texas is a whole country in itself. And then I still, you know, out for having the success of a still tipping. Uh, you know, yeah. the stuff with Pharrell. I could still do the out of, you know, uh, state shows and stuff, too, and, you know, get paid off of that, too. So it's like I get the best of both worlds, for real. So now that you look at the game, right, because, you know, a lot of times you be on Instagram, you say stuff, and it just go. Yeah. You know, the, the power of the gram. Yeah. What, what state is the, the hip-hop game in right now? Man, the hip hop game. I mean, like you know, we it's it's up. Everybody get money. I think they said they made more money off of uh, streams and than ever. But how much did the rappers get? How, it was like sixteen billion. I think fifteen point six billion. How much? How many rappers was billionaires? You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm saying, bro. Like that's my whole point. Being independent. That's all I can think. I can't think you get more than me. You know what I'm saying? So I look at the talentless people. I ain't going to call them talentless. Well, fuck it. I will. I'm just saying, like, I just feel like it's just set up like that for them to own us and get all this money off us. And, and it's just been like that. And that's why people do it. But I believe as artists these days, they need to tap into that independent world with social media. You don't need a label, man. Young boy show you that. He ain't on no radio nowhere. But doing numbers like, what, Drake? Probably more than Drake. Young boy. He's he doing, he doing his numbers. Exactly, bro. <laughs> like, it's, you could do it. Like, all you need it. Once you got your fan base and a direct fan base, you up, bro. You don't need no record label. You should be getting more than them is how I feel about labels, you know. 
And I feel like that about the NFL, the NBA, everything. I think we need to start all that shit over, bro, and get more than everybody because that's our Wakanda, bro. That's our what they got over there that they won't sell. <laughs> my brain, my brain. Yeah. We can't sell that shit. We can't let them get more than us, bro. And that's not no hate, man. I love everybody, but I just know I can't go at nothing Jewish. And they say, uh, this black man finna get more than me off of our stuff. I can't do nothing in the Mexican community and say, hey, I can't go open no taco shop in the middle of Mexican hood and just say, man, I'm finna just do. No, nah, it ain't going down, bro. Only thing that, only people who let that go down is black people, bro. Chinese people ain't going for it. Nobody going for no, it. because the Asians it. come set up shop in the hood. And they, yeah, they set niggas. up. And then that's, they, they and that's my thing. Yeah. They raised three families off that motherfucker store. Exactly. So that's our community money, though. And, you know, we can't do it in their community. So I feel like, you know, we need to take advantage of all those opportunities and stop asking people for shit, bro. Like, I just be embarrassed to see all these grown-ass men with more, all these rules. Like, grown-ass men, rich, but can't do what they want want to do man it's just like you know and how the fuck Slim Thug can uh, go on Instagram and show his gun and Ja Morant can't if he worked 200 million dollars he ain't trying to kill nobody if he got a gun it's to protect himself and he out of the town and you want people to know that he can't have a gun so he out of out in Colorado and you want him to not have a gun and just cause of where he worked man he ain't bring it to the game he ain't bring it on the plane he ain't you know I feel like I feel like the rules that we accept are disrespectful, man. And then the owner will go home and go hunting with his kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You feel me? And they can do it, but we can't. Like, but oh, he rich. He took the contract. He signed it. You know what I'm saying? And everybody who ain't got money think money is everything. But I don't got nothing else I can buy right now. You know what I'm saying? So what a job of rent can buy? A two hundred million dollar nigga. Money ain't everything, bro. You it, know, it's only a little. So your freedom is important, bro. He should be able to get out of work and do whatever he want to do, as long as he won that game and performed up to his standard, bro. Like, and it I mean, ain't about people. Is- Pictures, man, they put a nigga pictures out of him in a strip club. I'm saying, like, exactly. what the fuck does that have to do with anything? Exactly. He out work, man. They played the game, bro. Why people care what people doing when they get out work, man? Like, you go to work. If you a regular motherfucker going to work doing your nine to five and can go off after that and hold your gun and do what you want to do, why John Morant can't? Oh, because he rich and he got a, you know, like, I don't look no, at life you know, like you that. You know, what's, you know what's really sad, though? What's really sad is that. You could go somewhere. You could you could rent out a private room. Oh, let me get this private room. I don't, I don't exactly. Know, right? And then you could get into a situation that ain't got nothing to do with this situation. When I was at this private room, it right. has nothing to do with this, right? And then, oh, we gonna throw this out there to the media. You know why? Yeah. Because our club's gonna be attached to that. Man, that man was in a room by himself. And guess what? We get free marketing and promotion. Yeah, exactly. And then after we put it, after we leak it out, and we we make him look even worse than what he look, then we gonna double back it and write a speech and say he's a great guy. Exactly. <laughs> he didn't do nothing that night. He came in and he just. It's to himself. A million dollars worth of multi million dollars worth of publicity. You but you just got, mo- but you just you, you you threw this man under the bus. Got the man pictures of him in the strip club just to get some marketing and promotion. That's man. that's what it happened. This shit crazy to out here, man. It's too crazy. What but I, he should be free enough to do that though, man. Ain't nobody got no lick in the strip club anyway. You know what I'm saying? So if you ain't break no law, you shouldn't be getting fined and losing millions. If ain't no law, if you ain't go to jail for what you did, then you shouldn't have to, you know, pay these people these crazy amounts of money, man. Like it's just disrespectful, you know, to me. And it's crazy is like at, once you get to a certain level, when all the money come, you don't have no privacy. You you can't do nothing. You got to walk a thin line because everybody is out. To try, you know, because a lot of people don't like these lives, so everybody is yeah. out to, to to get some clout, to be the first one to post something about you doing something. You could be living your regular life, but if they think it's out of line, they're going to post it and write a caption or do something to act like you out of pocket. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, how I look at how I look at, how I look at the John Morant situation, you know, I, 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 I got to keep it real. I look at it like you're a professional athlete, and you got responsibilities as a professional athlete, and a nigga that make $200 million. You So know if you I mean? make $200 hold on, million. hold on, wait, hold on, bro. 
You got a lot of kids in the world that look up to you. You on TVs. You got a lot of sponsorships that's behind you. So flashing a gun in the club probably ain't the right thing to do. Right. You flashing so what a gun saying? in the club? So wherever you was at. So I, to me, on, on social media, I don't think that was the right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Do I think that you should be crucified and all that, how they try to throw you under the bus? No, because I think that when you're young, sometimes you make mistakes. Exactly. And, and that's just a part of life. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, okay, you made a mistake. Okay, let's let that mistake. You fucked up. Let's let it go. Like, But how it is today is that we want to take a kid we want to make him bigger than what he is, though. He's just a 23-year-old athlete exactly. that played basketball, man. He made a mistake. He ain't harming nobody. He wasn't shooting at nobody. He wasn't... He ain't even point the saying? gun and say no threat or right. nothing. He just showed a gun, bro. He, like so, it was, but he made a mistake because to all the future athletes, you don't want them to feel like... That's, that's what we're doing when we get to the NBA, when we get to the NFL, right. when we get to, these, to, to the NHL, when we get to wherever we going. No, you got a responsibility now to be a professional, yeah. you know, and a professional is not somebody that's flashing a gun or you feel what I'm saying? You could do that because Slim, you're a professional rapper. But at that, the, that, a lot of right. that come with being a professional rapper, a professional athlete. You got to be a professional athlete. So you do, sometimes you, do you, you think gotta, professional athletes should be able to have a gun and buy that line? No, no, absolutely. You, you think should be they able should to, be able to carry? Absolutely. Okay. I yeah. think you absolutely should be able to protect yourself at right. all costs when you're worth $200 million, exactly. $100 million, $100,000. If you ain't worth shit, you should be able to protect yourself. And I believe so, that. I believe that. I, even if we don't agree with that, even if that's our opinion to say we don't like that he did that, you know, he should, uh, we, we want him to be a um, professional and all that there. I believe that if he ain't break the law, it shouldn't be no fines. It shouldn't be no nothing but, you know, them being just them saying he shouldn't do that. You right. know, because at the same time, his owner going to go hunting and shoot hogs and shit with his kids and show their gun on Instagram and ain't shit going to happen to them. This dude's still a grown ass man. If you work $200 million, you should be able to do what the fuck you want to do every day. You know what I'm saying? After work. Not at the gym. Now, don't bring the gun to your locker room. Don't bring it to the plane. Don't do no shit like that. But after you out for your job, like, why the fuck? I'm from Texas, though. Everybody got guns, bro. Right. It's not you a big is from deal. Texas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a little different now. Yeah, yeah. man. It's like that. You know? You, you, you see now, the part mm -hmm. about him being in a strip club, I don't, you know, I think he should be able to go see some ass. Strip clubs don't sell liquor, man. Damn and that boy. wasn't no strip club. That was a private room. You oh, can see was, it. Oh, yeah. oh he was really was. getting busy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, was, yeah, he was going to get a little, you know what I mean, mean, little release. He's been yeah. through a lot of pressure lately. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He's going to you know, some asses bounce around. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. He better have a gun. You know what I mean? I mean, he a black man worth $200 million out of town. You should have a gun, bro. Like, that's what, see, that's what, I, that's what my problem is. I don't move off of. Let's do this for the kids Because that's how niggas get killed Trying to look good for kids Nigga like You work 200 million dollars out of town mm -hmm. And it's 2 in the morning Nigga yeah You need a gun Like that's what common sense tell me But I don't work for nobody So rules don't register with me On a lot of shit Common right. sense do You know what I'm saying But then also The flip side of that You say You John Morant You worth 200 million Why you just don't hire some top flight Security niggas, <laughs> right? That just even nigga even played with you. It's like <laughs> See, no, shoot six I, niggas in one second. I totally, I totally believe that that's me. exactly what happened. I believe that was a bodyguard gun, and he picked it up on some shit like that. I don't believe uh, he ain't in there with no pistol like that, bro. Come on, no, so so you know it's always a flip side, but you know over here, million dollars worth of game, man. We don't ever beat the youngins up, man. We about giving the youngins game. Right. That's got us attention, motivation, and education. We love you over here. Ja, love, you feel what I'm saying? Keep I doing love, your thing. Keep I turning up. Ja, Keep man. getting, getting him through the marina to sing an NBA young boy in my city. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll lay John Marina. Yeah. Man, shut yeah. up, man. You don't lay no up. fucking body up. You're a bum, dog. Everybody, every fucking basketball player that was on this show said you was a fucking bum. From Kevin Durant, an NBA you're a no. bum. My fucking Damian Lillard, yeah, he's a bum. Jason Tatum. Damn. Milo, you're a bum. Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony. 
Hey, how you know your wallet? Carnet, they hate Shaq. They hate Shaq. Uh, yeah, Niggas yeah. in the NBA. Shaq said he got two left feet. I was free ball bum. player. That's Damn. why they be hating. Fuck you, a fucking jail player. Fuck is you talking about? A fucking uh, bum. Man, what you got coming up, Thug? Man, I, st- I stay active on the independent side. Man, I drop a project or two every year. I'm working on a new project called Midlife Crisis. <laughs> oh, you have a midlife crisis, huh? I'm having a midlife crisis. I'm buying up everything. No. Nigga, is you ever getting a woman? Is you ever getting a woman? I don't think so, man. It don't Why? seem realistic. Why? I'm, You know, like I say, man, I move off common sense. And, um, you know, seeing so many marriages go bad and the billionaires even leaving their wives. So it don't seem like a money move, you know, and I make money moves. So... If it ain't gonna add to the money or be more positive for me, it's gonna take away from the uh, kingdom. I don't want it, you know what I'm saying? So that's all I see. Understand that I'm Slim Thug. My name is Slim Thug. I come from a toxic environment, you know what I'm saying? I see a lot of marriages work. So I do think different than the normal person, you know what I'm saying? So that's just the way my life is, but I ain't gonna lie, I love it. You know, it's, it's very. Um, I can. It's a it's variety pack, man. You know. No, what I'm you saying? say that. You know. I just want to go back to that night. I want to go back to the fuck. I'm telling this story. No, fuck that. I'm telling this story. We was at a random gas station in Texas, right? Pull yeah. over. I need some backwoods, right? Next day, I know a fucking Rolls Royce pulling. It was a Rolls. You was in. I right? was in a Rolls truck, cutting it. Yeah. He jump out. What's that? <laughs> Four bitches jump out. <laughs> yeah. This nigga follow was in love with slim. one of the bitches. Yeah. Yeah. Was, he was, was like, like, oh my God, cuz those bitches that was with Slim was glowing. I'm going, going with Slim. Like, yeah, Sugar I'm going Daddy. with Slim. We, we had to go film somebody and somebody told me, I'm going to go with Slim. He ain't even know Slim. This was his first. But that, but man, that think about that though. Really, like I just like I say, man. I'm a, he had four pieces in the car with him, man. Was, yeah. He said they was glowing, cause. But if you, you got a girlfriend, it. you can't do that though. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, so glowing. if you pick that, it was light nighttime. Up. They was glowing in Duh, the dark. He said your bitches was glowing. <laughs> <laughs> they was glowing in the dark. It was nighttime. I said they lit the gas station up. Oh man, I said see? this shit is. The this. nigga said you was getting the car. The nigga said, "Man, I'm gonna." But he was dead. Serious. <laughs> like, like I wasn't even there. He was talking to us. He's like, "Man, I want to go with the." <laughs> you should have let me know, kid. He's like, "Shit." We would, we but you know, he, that was his introduction to you. Damn, baby, you a legend. He <laughs> That's didn't even real. pick the bitches. Who's gonna put you out? <laughs> you a legend, nigga. I listen to your shit, Jim. Miss God, he's like. Oh man, that's, crazy, that's man. good. Man, we represent it right. H town, we represent it right. Just glowing, cuz did you see him? That's they how it's supposed glowing. to be, man. I, I went, from, what the fuck was going I on? I to go with Thug. We from Africa, Wallow, man. In Africa, <laughs> talk about it. You could be a polygamist, man. What? Well, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, I forget. You can but have you had one of them bitches, man. He fell in love with the bitch. <laughs> He's like, no, the bitch. With the, had that blue one. I didn't see that, man. Yes, you did. You I don't said, even remember who it was. Yo, you said the bitch they had the blue one. I wish I knew. Shit. I wish I remember when it was. I, yeah, I was I talking about all fucking night, man. I said, I couldn't believe this shit. Shut the fuck up, man. That's when they was killed them bitches, man. <laughs> you keep talking nah, about Houston got fine women, bro. <laughs> yes, they do. Houston got some fine women, bro. Like, you know, I don't appreciate them enough because I live here, but they, yeah, they fine out here, bro. How you feel about the women kind. in Houston? I'm going to say this. Two of my, Gil and somebody else told me this. Say Houston got the baddest women in America. I believe so, man. I, it could be possible. I came down this joint. Dog, I learned that in 1999. It's a lot of, it's a lot of different kind out here, man. It's a lot of beautiful women Bro, out here. I learned that in 1999, man. Yeah, when I signed with cool. Swap House, man. <laughs> and I went out with Drake. Yeah. It I used could to be not believe that shit then, in the club, though. man. I could not believe that shit. I was like, it was crazy back then, though. In the nineties, like that's when it was really crazy. Like now, everybody migrating. You know, it's different. <laughs> it's still beautiful down this month. It's like, still God, beautiful. Damn. You got a lot of out of towners, though. It's 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 a nice scene, man, out here with the ladies. So it's like, why would you get a relationship? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you be in a club like, all right, young as shit. I'm like, what the fuck is going? On? It was crazy. Man. Shit was crazy. That was the day I, I learned. I was like, from that day on, I was like. Houston, Texas probably got the prettiest women in. It's live, world, man. man. Houston, a cheap city. Where it's going? I don't up. know if it's the whole Texas or Houston, Texas. I'm just, I just was in Houston. It might uh, be the whole Texas. They I got a know. lot of beautiful women all over Texas. I, I know in Houston, the Dallas. Yeah, ninety nine. It's nice. It was popping. I mean, you just got to get them out, bro. I'm telling you, like you get, the, you you do the right party and they come out. 
you'll see some uh, yeah, there's some beautiful women out here, man. All over Texas though, it's a lot of beautiful women, man. I ain't never really did no shit like in a bunch in Texas a bunch of times. But yeah, some real like back, let back Drake let somebody pull up in this bitch, Drake do a party or some shit. Oh, yeah, they gonna come out. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that type of shit. So man, we appreciate you, man. You brought us in. Showed us we, we started off, we showed y'all the cars. Huh. <laughs> we showed y'all. Nigga. <laughs> it was crazy. I'm just saying. I'm glad y'all came down, man. I've man. been checking y'all out since y'all started, man. I seen the growth. I seen you boys turn this into a million dollar podcast. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, Bro. big salute to y'all. I'm, t- I'm tapped in on the gram. The positive messages uh, in the morning. Wallo putting in that work. Putting in that work, man. That's yes. why you blessed like that. You do it every day, bro. Every putting day, in that work. Bro. Get them people that's that positive motivation. Talking, yeah, man. Keep, Keep that good work man. up, kid. I'm proud, proud of y'all, man. Boy. Yeah, man, appreciate oh, you. Man. And you got a million dollars worth of jewelry on a million dollars worth of game. <laughs> uh, and he showed us two million dollars worth of cars. Turn up, man. It's good to be independent, man. Shout out to the independent boss. Independent bosses is out real. There. I'm just saying, listen, this, this is like to the rap game, this is considered an old nigga. Like, I'm old for sure. Like, I'm, I'm old, just man. saying, right? You don't really see a lot of old rappers. No, I'm, not, I'm not talking about CEOs. I said rappers, but you are a CEO. Yes, yeah, he is. So, so yeah, it don't, it don't all end. All I ever been. Yeah, they man. don't be having 16, 17 cars, six bikes. And they got a bike in that garage <laughs> for no reason. This is just right. Houses, mansions, you don't stay in. You don't yeah. even stay here, man. I'm at the apartment, man. But you know, like I say, man. I, Hey, to the youngsters, this million dollar worth of game, man. You know, like I say, I'm independent. It's my job to advocate being independent, man. Uh, integrity, man. You know what I'm saying? If Malcolm X was here, he'll call a lot of niggas sellouts, bro, because we letting other motherfuckers eat more out for us than we are. And that ain't cool, you know what I'm saying? We got to get to a point where that ain't cool so it can be some real billion dollar rappers out here, you know what I'm saying, walk around here. We got to get that somewhere. We got to, you know, shoot the dice on ourselves enough to at least know how much we worth before we just go sell ourselves, you know, to some cheap deals where we get minimum wage out of what we really work. You know what I'm saying? Making people a hundred million and they giving you one that ain't adding up. You know what I'm saying? So that's my preach to the, you know, youth out there, man. Quit trying to run into, you know, uh, signing or giving away ownership and try to build something from the ground up authentic, you know, try to get a real direct fan base you can really trust. It ain't depending on being on the radio, on the hot song. They gonna be there regardless, you know what I'm saying? So just focus on that. That's it. That's what it's about, man. That was a million dollars worth of game. Yes, Nigga, that was a hundred million dollars worth of yes, game. Sir. Right. And we live from uh you know one of Slim motherfucking beast. <laughs> you know, been in a couple of them today. Nigga got his own garage. Nigga did this with the sliding doors and all that. With the 18 hitting black whips for no reason in the Rolls Royce that only got 216 fucking miles on it because he drove it one time to a club <laughs> and then he. Oh, and it's just like that. Right. <laughs>